If you know about special relativity, you have probably learned or heard that at low velocity, Lorentz transformation formula becomes same as the Galilean transformation formulas. But is this statement always true? Hello everyone, this is your physics trainer Mockingbird. And in this short video, I'm going to show you that at certain cases, the Lorentz transformation doesn't become the Galilean transformation at low velocity. So the statement isn't true always. The concept behind this is very simple. However, I think most people haven't given a thought about this. I also didn't. This video is based on a problem from the book Modern Electrodynamics by Andrew Zangwill. The problem statement says, to consider a pair of events and their spatial separation is still z and temporal separation is still t. And it tells us to show that the Lorentz transformation of these differences don't reduce to Galilean transformation formulas in the limit of very low boost speed, at least for some cases. Now we will try to solve this problem. Now, before moving into solving the problem, I'm going to give you a brief recap of Lorentz and Galilean transform. Now, suppose that we have two observers and they have their respective reference frame k and k prime. And suppose that at um, some point in time, let's say t equal to zero, we synchronize both of the clocks of these frames and the origins were at the same point at that time. But we have a velocity v along the z direction. I must mention that the axes are aligned in a similar way in both frames. Now, the Lorentz and Galilean transform formulas actually relate the coordinates that are measured in both frames. Let's say in Galilean transformation, we will have this type of relation. But uh, as we have the boost speed in one direction, here in the z direction, the other coordinates will be same. You can find it on any classical mechanics or special relativity textbook. And for Galilean transformation, the times are. And for Lorentz transform, we have a different case. Here, Z prime will not be so simple. It would be like something like this. X and X prime will be equal. So is Y and Y prime. T prime will be a bit different. The difference formulas are simply calculated in this way. Here gamma is Now let's begin to solve the problem. So for this problem, I'm going to assume that the boost direction is along the z direction. So we, if we need to consider the low velocity limit of Lorentz transformation formulas, so let's first begin with those Lorentz transformation formulas. So for the temporal separation, we have this. And for low velocity limit, which means V is very much less than C, gamma will be almost equal to 1 because this term here is going to be very much equal to 0. And with that, we're going to get this for low velocities. So it seems that for the temporal separation, we get the same formula from the Lorentz transformation as we get from the Galilean transformation. Because at Galilean transformation, we have this relation 
for the transform coordinate so the difference will be just like this but that's not actually the end of the story because we haven't actually considered the temporal separation equation which is like this now at low velocity limit gamma will be equal to 1 once again del t and v del z c squared but the thing is no matter how small v is then c we can find always del z values so large that this term will not be negligible so this term will give a non-zero effect on this whole temporal difference in the transformed coordinate so we can't ignore that however from the Galilean transformation we have this relation so from Galilean transformation we need to have this so for some cases where del z is so large that we cannot ignore this second term here the Lorentz transformation formulas don't reduce to Galilean transformation formula at low velocity now the second part of the question asks whether the events in question are space-like or time-like. Now to answer that question, let's look into the temporal difference transformation equation here. Now if the second term here is not negligible, then obviously it has to be greater than or almost equal to um, or in the same order as the first term. So, as u divided by c is very much less than 1, now let's look into this term, it is u over c times del z over c. Now, this term is very small already, so then this term has to be very much larger than 1. Now, if this term is very much larger than del t, then we can actually not neglect this second term here. So this is the only possible scenario where uh, the Lorentz transformation doesn't become the Galilean transformation at low velocity. And for this relation, we get and we know del s equals to del x squared plus del y squared plus del z squared minus c delta. Now these two terms are zero, obviously, and as del z square is very much greater than c delta t, obviously this term is also greater than zero. And this is the condition for space-like events. So the events in question are space-like. If it was less than zero, then the events will be time-like. But here we have the events as space-like. If you like the video, please consider subscribing to my channel, like the video, and share it on your social media. That's all for today.